guys, my name is Sandy. I'm a homeschooling mom to two boys. They're currently in sixth grade and eighth grade, and this is our fifth year homeschooling. And today I'm gonna to be going over a science. This is Earth Science for the Logic Stage, and it's by Elemental Science, and this is for middle school. So here's a closer look at the books that you need for the Elemental Science, Earth Science, and Astronomy for the Logic Stage. This is their middle school program. And you need all four of these books for the program to work. So from their website, I purchased these two soft covered books. This is the teacher guide. And then also the student guide. The other two books that I purchased on my own that you need for this, and this is where most of your reading is going to happen, is the Usborn Science Encyclopedia. I purchased the soft covered because it's a little bit smaller and easier to carry around and the Kingfisher Science Encyclopedia. Um, this one I found at Thrift Books. And let me go into each book and what they all have in them. The first book is the Teacher Guide. Open it up and show it to you guys. Here's the table of contents. introduction and there's a book list for additional books and um, here's the materials that are needed for all the science experiments they're very easy materials to find I had thought about getting the whole experiment kit but then when I looked at the materials I realized I can just collect these on my own in the teacher guide, this is for week one. It starts off with a science experiment. This is what you need. This is what you have to do. And then there's vocabulary and memory work every week. There's a sketch assignment every week. A writing assignment, which I believe is optional. And different dates to enter. And then I really like this part of it. There's two different schedules. If you're doing it two days a week, it tells you exactly what to do on each day. And there's also for five days a week. And on the next page of the teacher booklet, it explains the experiment in more detail so you can break it down to your students a little bit. And there's discussion questions every week. My son just answers these out loud. And here's the diagram that the child will color in or draw every week. Here's the next week. You go into the experiment first. So here's the student guide. The student guide actually has a lot of the same information that the teacher guide has, but they both have things that you're going to need for the course. There's the table of contents. There's a little bit of information to read to the students. There's how to make the schedule work. Here's for the timeline, the first few pages. And this your child can write into. They don't have to do everything in a separate notebook. All right, here are the vocabulary words for the whole unit. This is for unit one space. What I, what I did with my son for the vocabulary words is he typed them up. Like I went ahead and got all the vocabulary words for the year and put them in a document. And then he went in there on the computer and filled in the definitions as each unit came up. So here's the experiment. You can see both the teacher guide and the student guide has the experiment information in it. Here's the vocabulary word for this week, universe. The memory work. This is the sketch. So your child can sketch right on here or color it in or do whatever it asks them to do and they don't need to do it on a separate page. And the dates to enter. See it's a lot like the teacher guide. Here's the introduction to the experiments. They can write in the materials needed here, the procedure, observations on the next page, the results, the conclusion, 
And then over here is discussion questions. There's two pages for the child to write on. And with my son, he just discussed them out loud. So out of these two, the Kingfisher Science Encyclopedia got used a lot more. And this part was the part my son didn't really like. So, every so basically how the reading would work every week is that um, my son would have to read two pages from this encyclopedia and that was it. So he would just have to read this and this and then take notes on an outline while he was reading. So this is the other encyclopedia that you use for your weekly reading. It's either two pages from here or two pages from the other one. My son likes this one a little bit better. He said it wasn't as boring to read, but this one's not used as often, unfortunately. And when they read it, they've got to take notes on it in an outline, which he didn't really care for, but I think it was helpful to do it. Good note-taking skills. Here's a little clip of one of the science experiments that we've performed. It is, um, I used Play-Doh or you could use clay. It was for creating the different layers of the earth and then cutting it open. Oh, it's So let me show you guys what a typical week would look like exactly from here. This is the teacher guide. This is where the schedule is. So day one, you're going to do the experiment. Read, and in this case, you read from the Kingfisher Encyclopedia, and then you write an outline. Day three, it's define mantle, which is the vocabulary word. Um, you do the dates on the timeline, and you do your diagram, which is this diagram for that week. And then day four, read an additional reading assignment. There's more books listed if you want your children to read more. And then if they're doing the writing assignments, they can prepare the report. And then day five, study a scientist in the field or complete one or more of the activities listed. And there's the supplies once again. Let me show you the student book for that same week. This was the science experiments. This was the vocabulary, the writing assignment, the sketch assignment, which is right here. He colored it in for the layers of the earth and the dates. And in my book, I added extra links for online. Um, every week, if we didn't want to do the science experiment, he would do online activities and watch like YouTube videos instead of the experiments. Because every week is kind of a lot. And this is another diagram he had to draw for that activity. And one thing else to mention, I don't really test my kids too often, but there are unit tests throughout here. Each unit has a test at the end of it in the teacher guide. And this is what one test would look like. There's true or false, there's matching, and there's more pages, there's questions. And then here's the answer key in the teacher guide. So that's basically a quick overview for the elemental science, earth science, and astronomy for the logic stage. Um, I, it's a good program. I really don't have any complaints. My one complaint is that I feel like the reading is not enough, but they do list additional reading. Instead of doing additional reading, though, I chose mainly to have my child do like online activities and YouTube videos to go with it. And doing one science experiment every week can get a little bit too much sometimes, so we do like one every two or three weeks. I hope this is helpful. Bye, guys!